Okay, good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to chakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show. Also give you daily stock ideas to consider those hit your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities closed higher in Monday's trading with the S&P 500 and all the major ETFs really ending near the session highs. All sectors were green on the day. Treasuries were mixed with the curve steepening. The dollar was stronger against the yen and sterling crosses, but slightly weaker against the euro. Gold finished up 10 basis points. WTI crude was up 3.1% and did close near the highs of the day. Your outperformers, industrials, comm services, and materials, your underperformers, healthcare, financials, and tech. As we get to the desk this morning, it's a little bit of a mixed bag with S&P futures down 20 basis points heading into the final trading day of the second quarter and first half of the year. Asian markets were higher overnight. European markets are weaker this morning. Treasuries are unchanged. The dollar is stronger on the major crosses. Gold is up 10 basis points. WTI crude is down about one and one half percent. As we look at the structure here, we get the rebound to retake the 200 day moving average. All right, a little bit of a rebound here yesterday, but still very much within this consolidation zone, right? Holding support in the 3000 to 3100 level below that. 2850 to 2950. The February highs remain in play as long as support is holding. And we now do get the added benefit of this rising 50 day moving average coming into the picture as well. Resistance still very much at around 3150 up to 3250. Uh, 3150, kind of the start of this gap here which has been a solid wall of resistance to rally attempts over the past couple of weeks. The 13 period CCI is near an oversold condition and shaken money flow is bullish, but waning. So uh, really the structure of the market remains as it has been for the past few weeks. I think, you know, you have this kind of zone that we're trading in 3000, uh, the floor to the downside, 3150, the ceiling to the upside. And in between that, it's just a lot of choppy back and forth trading, as we've seen over the past couple of weeks in this type of environment. As always, I like to identify what are the strongest and weakest areas of the market. You want to skew bullish ideas towards the uh, stocks that are in the stronger areas of the market. But that is the structural setup as we head into the final day of June. Taking a look at our market in a minute now, what are we writing about today? Well, we close near the highs of the day. We talked about that. Healthcare is testing key relative support, and that's important because this was a leader. And remember, a couple of weeks ago, we started talking about this waning relative strength, which then gave way to a relative breakdown. So the fact that we're testing support now, I think, is important. And I want to start to drill down and see within healthcare what's kind of, what kind of looks interesting. Now, last week, we talked about biotech. This week, we'll talk about healthcare equipment, which is leading the spy in the near term. Materials and industrials are showing signs of stabilization on a relative basis. And as I said, futures point to a mixed open here today. Looking at the major indices from a power bar perspective, the Dow tacked on 2.3%, but didn't do much for its ratio, three bulls to 10 bears there. S&P 500 up 1.5%, 85 to 131 bulls to bears. NASDAQ slight underperformer, 30 to 14 on the ratio. Small caps outperformed, and that really has been the trend of late, right? On the down days, small caps lead to the downside. On the up days, small caps have been leading to the upside. And the ratio here is still bullish, 573 to 296. Bonds down tick slightly. Industrials. We're a big leader on the heels of strength in Boeing. Industrials tack on 3.3% uh, on the day, six bulls to 19 bears, however, as the ratio for that sector. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks are more bullish than large cap stocks, and the major markets do remain mixed. Now, speaking of healthcare equipment, I decided to dig in and see if there were any interesting names within that space with healthcare testing support on a relative basis with the equipment portion of that sector uh, outperforming the SPY. I find the name like Sermotics, which is uh, a little bit on the smaller side, S-R-D-X, the ticker symbol there, with a bullish shake in power gauge rating for a stock that's in a strong trend above a rising long-term trend line and in a strong industry group, healthcare equipment, uh, strong industry group here. So, 
when I look at the stock, I see that the rating recently turned bullish and it's been outperforming uh, since the uh, late March, early April timeframe. Overbought, oversold indicator beginning to move higher in an oversold position while shaken money flow is bullish. So when I see a stock like this, looks to be uh, stabilizing and beginning to move higher uh, in a sector that is testing and thus far holding relative support and an industry group that's outperforming, I think the potential is there for an interesting setup. Now, the, the thought being here, if you are looking for names on the smaller side, uh, this one certainly fits the bill. Uh, you might want to take a look at uh, Sermotix here, SRDX, the ticker symbol. I'm highlighting it in my note today and featuring it here for you on the show. Taking a look at our sector tracker now, the movement of the major sectors over the last five days, still all red. A little bit of shuffling towards the top of the list as that strong performance in the industrials yesterday boosted that one. Materials also towards the top of the list. And we're going to take a look at both of those relative charts a little later on as they are showing signs of stabilization. Tech rounds out the top three. Staples, healthcare, discretionary, and REITs are middle of the road. Utilities, financials, communication, and energy at the bottom of the list. You know how I feel about energy. Comms under pressure with more advertisers. Uh, coming on board with potential boycotts of advertising on social platforms, weighing on the relative strength in that group over the past couple of days. Financials started to come under pressure late last week on the heels of the stress tests, uh, where it appears that they are going to be limiting buybacks and capping dividends in the near term. So that's the picture from a sector standpoint uh, as we go into the uh, the end of the first half of the year. Now, speaking of financials, our industry in focus today, bank services, which has you know, been a mess over the past six months, lagging the S&P 500 by a nearly 29%. Power bar ratio is very bearish, and that's a measure of future potential. Uh, seven bullish stocks for 27 bearish stocks. It's currently ranked number 20 of the 21 subsectors that we track, and it's moved down five slots over the past week. So some very bearish stocks there that we want to avoid. Community Bank, CBU, Commerce Bank shares, CBSH, and Prosperity Bank share, PB, uh, all with very bearish shaken power gauge ratings. Uh, and we take a look at the fund here, KBE. We can see the rating here kind of matches. It has a bearish ETF rating. Here's your ratio, 7 to 27 bulls to bears for a fund that is now in a weak trend below the declining long-term trend line. Now, I've drawn this kind of uptrend line off of uh, the March lows to give you a sense of where we could potentially go uh, should we decide to continue to pull back and test support. Now, the fund has been underperforming since the start of the year, and after a brief attempt at a reprieve, see, seeing the intensity of underperformance pick up once again. That's coinciding with chicken money flow dipping back into bearish territory. Now, the fund is deeply oversold here in the near term, so it's just something to keep an eye on as so we go back and forth here a little bit. But bigger picture perspective, right? This is a bearish fund that's underperforming the market with bearish money flow. So not something we generally want to dive into. Continue to see pressure here on the banks in the near term. KBE, we talked about some of those indicative names there as well. Looking now at yesterday's S&P 500, gainers and losers are movers and shakers. Boeing, uh, starting certification flights of the 737 MAX, uh, that was enough to juice the stock by about 14.5% yesterday, still with a bearish rating here at Chaken Analytics. Kohl's, nothing company specific to drive that one higher by about 10%. SPG uh, provided an update where they did cut their dividend. I think that was widely expected. SPG. Uh, up 10% yesterday, uh, yesterday and trading higher in the pre-market this morning. Fund does have a very bearish rating. Uh, Love, that's Southwest Air, up a little over 9.5% following an upgrade at Goldman Sachs. And L Brands was uh, up 9% yesterday as the retail group was strong. Uh, probably accounts for 
uh, the tick higher in Kohl's as well. Both Kohl's and L Brands carry neutral ratings. On the loser side of the board, some commentary about gas sales sent Noble lower. Noble with a very bearish rating down 5% in an uptape yesterday. Take two, didn't see anything company specific to take 2.4% out of that stock on the day. Alexion pulling back uh, as biotech has been on a big tear lately. Alexion with a very bullish rating. Biotech roughly flat. Alexion with a little bit of a pullback there down 2%. PAYC didn't see anything company specific to drive that one lower by nearly 2%. Same goes for MSCI. MSCI with a very bearish rating down 1.94%. Though no company specific driver behind that move. So here's healthcare. As we dive into the charts, every Tuesday we do our relative strength work across sectors and kind of see or get a sense for where the money could be rotating within the market. And remember, for the past few weeks, we started talking about this waning relative uh, momentum here as the new high in relative strength was not confirmed by a higher high with RSI. We pointed out that divergence and then we pointed out the breakdown and now we've pulled back to test, to test support at a rising 200-day moving average and the top end of this consolidation zone that played out through uh, most of the back half of 2019. Now, what's interesting to me uh, is we've broken the downtrend line on the RSI as it just barely moved into oversold levels. So I think that this is an important potential inflection point for healthcare on a relative basis. If this support level holds, uh, we can start thinking about healthcare reasserting its leadership position within the market. Now, from a power bar perspective, you know, healthcare still uh, has a ratio that's stronger than that of the SPY. If we take a look at the fund on an absolute basis, you can see we bumped our head near 52 week highs before pulling back into this near term consolidation. So uh, it's an area of the market that we're watching closely. Uh, I will note that biotech's been strong. Um, healthcare equipment, which we're going to take a look at is uh, moving in the right direction on a relative basis. Uh, so I think it does, this is one of those sectors where I think it makes sense to drill down to the industry level to really see uh, what's leading and what could be weighing on bigger picture performance. And as we take a look at healthcare equipment, XHS, uh, I'm sorry, this is services, XHS uh, pulling back to the, right, to the 50 and 200 day moving averages, near term support here, this should say services, starting to rise here. Equipment also holding up well, closer to an oversold position, uh, here, as we take a look at that 13 period CCI and the three day moving average of it. So, certain areas of healthcare uh, are performing better than others. I would say the pharma area, I'm just going to change this to services. Pharma is one of the areas that's been a weak spot, but you know, services are holding up better, equipment's holding up better, biotech's holding up better. So, I think it makes sense to drill down to the industry level as we take a look at uh, this consolidation above support. Now, materials and industrials on a relative basis are showing signs of stabilization, right? And this is part of uh, potentially the rotation trade. In the top panel, we're looking at XLB relative to SPY. So materials relative to the S&P 500, right? Still below a declining 200 day moving average, right? As it consolidates here in what could potentially be right? A, um, an ascending triangle, if you will. For those who look at uh, classical chart patterns, we have resistance here, horizontal resistance, and a series of higher lows as we look to retake the declining 200-day moving average. Now, materials has been the one area of the rotation trade where we've been more bullish, but now we're taking a look here a little bit at industrials where there's a similar pattern potentially playing out. Now, granted, a lot more work to do, to get back to the 200 day moving average, but a very similar dynamic playing out as these groups look to stabilize. So that's going to wrap us up for today. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive, sign up for a 14 day trial. I'll be back with you tomorrow.
Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.